Hello and welcome to Provision ISR's webinar. Today we are going to talk about DDA analytics. Today's webinar is intended mostly for existing customers of Provision ISR's, those who already know the system. So therefore, today we're not going to talk about how to search like this for human beings or uh, vehicles as, as you might already know. Today we are mostly going to talk about how to properly set the cameras, how to install them, how to set the, the configuration. But uh, let's have a quick glimpse before on the abilities. So for those of you who doesn't remember, we can of course uh, select the video parts and then we can back them up into our USB both by AVI or by private as you can see here, by private we can give them a password, you already remember that. Uh, we can search for uh, human beings and on the bottom left we can see the video playing and everything. We can search for different vehicles from today or yesterday or an entire month. We can see results from different cameras. Um, of course the same principle as human beings, we can see uh, the video playing and we will not see records of parking vehicles, only moving vehicles. And of course that we can see the entire scene if you want or we can also uh, search for only two-wheel vehicle like motorcycles or bikes and etc etc. So before we start let me just tell you really quick the difference between the older version which is one for one and the newer version which is 143. This uh, NVR con uh, has the latest version which is 143 so let's quickly go uh, over the differences. So in 143 we have line crossing same as with 141 same name. Sterile area still the same name here and in 141. Object counting this is the name in 143 but in uh, 141 it says people counting. Now Area entry and area exit does not exist in 141, but over here, as you can see it, they are here. Okay. The first analytic we are going to see right now is the line crossing. So it's very simple to get into the settings. You press settings, event and line crossing, and we're there. So, uh, first thing, you can see in the right place right here we can see the list of cameras that support this feature so we have the front counting which is uh, our camera we can set it to on this is uh, stage number one now second thing that we want to do is uh, basically I'll, I'll just explain about it for a second we basically draw a line and we want to know when someone or something has crossed that line. So, for example, um, let's start and um, let's say that I want to know if if a two wheel, okay, a two wheel vehicle has entered my office. Now, it is okay for humans to to come by. Okay, we don't want to get uh, too many alarms of uh, only people that comes in, but since we don't allow uh, bikes inside, then we would like to get a notification whenever something like that happens. So, we press detect object, object and we selected the the, the, ve the correct vehicle, two-wheel vehicle. A small explanation about triggers. So, we said that whenever a two-wheel vehicle crosses the line, we want something to happen. So, this is where we set what will happen. We can set, first of all, uh, what cameras to record. So we can set here one, two, three, or all of the cameras that we want. Uh, we can make all of them record once a two-wheel vehicle is passed. So this is this could be good if we have a large corridor and we want all of the cameras on this corridor to start to record, no matter what, because we know that uh, those bikes are going to cross that corridor. We can activate an alarm out. If we want, for example, to activate a siren that is connected to one of those uh, relays. So the alarms out that we can see here are all of the alarms that are connected or to the IP cameras that can be 100 meters away from this NVR or uh, in the back of the NVR, the physical ones. So of course we can just 
press the alarms that we want to activate and press the button. If we we'll press OK, then it will be activated. Now, for example, uh, if I have a PTZ camera and someone has entered, I want to make that PTZ to uh, turn exactly to preset number 3, for example, which I know uh, will point into the entrance where this uh, person has, uh, has entered. A few more things that we can do. We can uh, perform a snapshot, which will be saved into the um, uh, HDD of the NVR. A push message which is activated by default into our cell phones, a buzzer which will make the NVR beep, a video pop up which will pop up a video on the local screen of the NVR, and of course we can send an email. Email can be set by here in the event notifications. This is where we set the um, the content of those the notifications themselves. So who the email is going to be sent to and what will be the content of that email. Now, in case that this uh, person with his bike moved through the line or bypassed it and for some, re for some reason he wasn't identified, then we can have some other lines. Up until four different lines, lines even in case that he decided to climb up the stairs with his bike. So this is for the example, I'm not going to save it. Of course we can control the direction and uh, the duration of uh, what will be the period between uh, one identification to another. So if this guy has passed 20 times in a second through that line, I won't get uh, 20 false alarms, I only get one uh, until uh, 20 seconds has passed. The next thing we are going to see is a sterile area. Now, as its name might suggest, sterile areas meaning is uh, to keep an area uh, out of movement. Okay, so no one can enter that area or leave that area or uh, just walk around that area. So the best example for that will be, let's say, an archaeological site. So in archaeological site, my people might enter and ruin things, so we want to protect that site. So let's say that we have here some special palace or something and we perimeter that area and uh, determine that whenever let's say uh, human when human enters or or two-wheel vehicle then we will get a trigger so we will go into the trigger and uh, let's say send an email okay so in this case we will get an email whenever somebody now you remember we chose two-wheel vehicle and human when a guy on a bike or a bicycle or by foot is entering that area. Now that area can be super large, not like this, but you know. So in that case we will get an email. So this is a perfect way to protect our, uh, basically our perimeter without getting a lot of uh, false alarms. So if, if uh, I don't know, a fox is walking in, so we won't get nothing. Only what we have uh, set. And uh, of course that we can take another area and simultaneously protect all kind of sterile areas. Okay, the next analytic we are going to see is area entry. Uh, now the idea behind area entry is to allow people to exit an area, but we don't want them to enter. If they enter, we want, uh, we want to be notified by it. So, first of all, like uh, every other section before that we have been to, we have the list of cameras to the right, the list of cameras that support this feature. So, of course, we're going to put that camera on, on, and then we are going to draw our area. So, it mainly happens in uh, a station, uh, let's say uh, a train station or pools or a lot of other facilities where we have an exit gate. So if you have an exit gate, people are supposed to leave that gate, but they're not supposed to enter. So we would like to be notified when someone is trying to enter that area. So if we're pretending that this thing is a gate, an exit gate, and then we choose uh, what we want to get not notified by. So let's say human, car, and tool vehicle. Okay, we, ha we can handle with the three possibilities. 
Uh, the only thing that remain is to set the trigger type, which could be everything that we have already talked about, if it is a snapshot, an email, or a push, or something like that. So, basically what we've just said is that if someone decides to enter this uh, exit gate, which means that he's basically breaking in, then we would like to be notified by it. So this is a great security measure, uh, a digital security measure, of course. Next thing we are going to talk about is area exit. It is the exact opposite of area entry. So basically what it means that we would like to get notified if uh, something or someone has exited the area that we have chosen. So a good, a good example for that will be a school, for example. We can perimeter a whole school, and uh, if a student is leaving that school, and of course we're talking about uh, youth uh, people that are supposed to be kept in until the, uh, the time has come to go home, then we would like to be notified by it. So it is a great measure to see if a uh, student has escaped his school or whatever. So how do we set it? Exactly the same like area entry, we're going to use actually the same example or even, you know what, let's go into the other back DDA, let's say that this is a school, now let's perimeter that school very, very easily. No, this is, this is bad, not good, okay. Uh, let's think, let's imagine that there is a building, okay, in the middle. just like this, then you select the triggers like we did a couple of times before and of course not to forget to set the camera to on and that's it. So what we just did was that we told the NVR to send us a trigger which is uh, okay, like to be feral email, we will be sent an email message when something is leaving that area if something is entering that area, it is okay. If something is walking around that area, it is also okay. But if a student has left his school in the middle of the day, it is not okay and we want to be notified by email. Thank you. Next thing is object counting. Now this is pretty interesting. Uh, let's choose, let's choose first of all, let's choose a camera. Now the whole point behind counting is to have this meter in the upper right side of the, ca of the, of the camera. <clears throat> sorry, of the picture, and we can see when the camera counts, we can see the counting, it counts humans, it counts car, and it can count bike. So, as a, a resemblance to what we just, what we, what we did before, we can decide what it will count. Will it count human, car, two-wheel vehicle, all of them, or part of them, doesn't matter. So, the most important thing about this kind of uh, setup, of installation, is to install the camera not from this angle, this angle is okay, but uh, the best way to install this camera will be to actually to install it from the top, straight above the door. And why is that? I'm going to explain that in a second. Let's see. We have the camera, we have the back counting camera right here. Now, as you can see, we have this person here. Now, we cannot see it but there is a virtual object box that surrounds this person. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I have prepared a small video that shows us exactly that thing. Okay, let's see. As you can see we have different people walking and every one of them has this uh, object box that surrounds him. Now we can see those object box only if we go into the camera through the web through the main interface of the camera. So once this object box has touched the line crossing, the meter of the exit, as you can see, it's, it says 117, it changes to 118. So let's see another example. This guy is moving, his object box is green, he touches the line, it turns red, and the object box turns uh, yellow, and 118 turns to 118. But let me ask you this. What will happen if a guy, a person, will walk from this place here into, let's say there is a vendor machine right there. 
So he crosses, his body doesn't, doesn't actually touch this line, but his object box, his virtual invisible object box will touch this thing and it will affect the meter. So I can assure you that uh, the, number that, the numbers that we see here, they are pretty accurate, but not 100%. And in order to prevent that thing, we would like to install the camera directly above the door. So in this case, when someone is uh, approaching the door, most of the chances is that he will walk in and not uh, you know, walk to the other side or something because the angle will be perfect. Now let's go ahead and see how do we set the object counting. So first of all, we'll go into settings, analytics and object counting. By the way, all of the menus right here are at the top as well. This is for simplicity. So uh, different locations, but same names. First of all, let's choose back counting our camera. And then let's see what we do. First of all, same as before, same as always, we need to turn that camera on. So that camera knows it's supposed to count. For an example, I'll turn it off. And you can immediately see that the meter on the upper right corner that was just here has gone. Now let's turn it back on, apply, voila. So what do we do next? Very, very difficult and cynical. All we have to do is to draw the line from one place to another. And when someone crosses in the direction of this arrow, it will count as an entrance. If someone crosses the opposite way, it will count as an exit. So all we have to do is to put our line in the right direction as close as possible to the door and that's it we are all set now as you noticed we have uh, a meter on the upper right corner so we can leave that meter to count endlessly of course by not checking that checkbox right here of the auto reset but most of the times we would like to have that uh, meter reset at least uh, you know once a day once a week so let's see how we do that all we have to do is to check this box and choose whether we want it to reset on a daily basis like this and then you choose the hour or on a weekly basis then you choose a day or on a monthly basis where you choose the day of the month of course we can have like 31 different days here and the correct hour I don't remember if I already said that but camera can count humans cars and different uh, uh, two-wheel vehicles bicycles or bikes or whatever has two-wheel two vehicles okay now that feature is especially good if you want to know how many people has entered our store in a day how many people has left the store in a day and um, if we get the install very good if we install the camera very in a very good uh, angle then we can for almost certain know how many people are still in the building okay so this is a very important stuff okay the next analytic that we are going to see now is a very how to say uh, nowadays problem okay it's uh, basically it's the missing and left object uh, uh, analytics so by using that feature we are capable of getting notified by a push message or an email if uh, an object got left in the scene or has been taken from the scene. Now, the best example for that would be a terrorist that is coming with his bag filled with explosive and he is leaving that bag in the middle of the train station. So, we can have all of the train station monitored by one, two, three or four different areas like a just uh, perimeter and whenever an object will be left inside of one of these areas we will get triggers as we said we can get them by email we can get them by uh, a, a siren that turns on or a PTZ whatever we want so this is a very good example for a security a security a digital security measure now the other way that we can use this feature is uh, by choosing missing object so if, if, if we have a precious object that we want to protect the best example for that will be a museum for example uh, if something is, uh, is has left that museum for some reason or maybe a car exhibition okay if someone stole a car 
then we can perimeter the car. Now this is not a model car, it's supposed to be much bigger. Now let's say that inside of that uh, perimeter we have a car or a, a, a statue of some kind. Then whenever that thing, whenever that object will be gone from here for the amount of time that we will determine right here, then we will get triggered up. Once again, a great security measure to protect our belongings or, uh, or exhibits. Of course, I didn't mention it because I forgot. Uh, you need to enable that first. Once we enable it, we can use it. So the next and final analytic that we are going to see is basically a pixel change analytics. This is why we can see much more cameras here than we see, for example, in the item monitoring which is based on uh, artificial intelligence, same as before. So, what we can do from here is to protect our cameras, which is very important. We can select each and every one of those cameras and uh, determine that whenever a camera is shifted or the camera is out of focus or that uh, someone came with a spray and sprayed that camera, then we will be notified by it. Of course, we can select the sensitivity and activate the proper trigger that we want. We can select the buzzer, we can select the trigger that we want to activate a siren, all of the things that we have already been through. Um, that's it. This is a great way to protect our system from different things. So we can get an email automatically and uh, immediately. So that is the end of today's webinar. Uh, I hope you all had fun and, and learned something. I sure have. And I uh, hope to see you in the next webinars. I was David from Provision ISR. Thank you very much.